Hello guys and welcome back to Bearham Engines. So first thing we're going to be doing this morning is showing you how to use the special tool for the BMW. We've got to put the camshafts back in um, and all the gear there. And like I've said to you before, it's one of the most difficult cylinder heads we've had with the most complex setup. So there's a specific order you've got to put it back together in. Um, so we're going to go head over there and I'll show you how to use the special tool. Okay guys, so we've got all the bits now for the BMW six cylinder head. So this is this one down here with the contraption of weird springs and stuff like that. So what we're going to do here is we've we've got the valve stem seals we've assembled the head we put all the springs in uh, the rockers are lying on the top so if you sort of have a look there see all the rockers are on the springs are in uh, we've got this camshaft in here now what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how to apply the new special tool to these springs over here and the order in which you assemble it now as you can see over here I have assembled one. The main reason for that was to try and teach myself how to do it really, because I didn't know how to do it. Um, so what I've done, I figured out that we have to load the, the spring seat in with the, the spring tool, the special tool, and put it all in as one. So what we do first, we take the spring seat off, because um, that's the first mistake I've made. I've put all these in place. Now you've got this actuator camshaft here, which you do keep in place, although you keep it free. Um, so the lobes are off these rockers down here. So if we take this one off here, the little, and we put the bolts in last. Right, so what we do is you've got the special tool here. So what we do is we take the bolt out of the spring and we load the spring tool. We're pushing that, those legs into these two feet here. There is a nut at the back, which we do up. We just do that up. And what that does is pull those two feet and hold the spring down in place there. Now ensuring that these two legs are in the arms, we push the tool down and that compresses the spring until this little stop here clicks in position. There we go. So that now means that that spring, you can see the head, that spring is sitting as it should be. I mean, you imagine trying to bend that by hand, you wouldn't do it, certainly not. So that is installed. Then what we do is we take the spring seat and we locate that into this as well. So we just tap that back as far as it can go. And now that you see where the spring is sitting on that now, and that is how it goes onto the cylinder head. So what we do, first of all, you've got the two rockers down the bottom here, and then you take one of the other rockers and we put that in position down the back of the cylinder head, making sure that you turn the camshaft so it's off the lobes on the one you want to do, otherwise it makes it impossible to get these rockers in there. So we put one rocker in, and then the one beside it in too, like so. You see those sitting there now. Then the next thing to do is locate the spring. You want to put these two springs down the back of those rockers and sit them in their locators down the back of the, the rockers. And this is the fiddly bit. So now what you do when that's in position, you take the bolt that goes into the top and holds the spring down. And you just nip it up. Then what you do is you look down the back here and make sure that the, like I said, the two spring arms are in their locators on the back of the rockers. And when you're sure of that, 
what you do is you squeeze in the handles, pull back the stop and release the spring very slowly. Then you undo this locker and you pull the tool out. Yep, they're in position down there. So then what we do is we put the two securing bolts on the spring base up here. I'm not sure whether this is exactly the, the way you're supposed to do it, but it's the, the way that works with me. And then you've got to make sure that these two rockers, the two rollers at the top are located on the back of this actuator cam down here. Ta-da, that's it. So it's as easy as that, guys. Um, now I've, all I've got to do is do the other four. And then we've just got to make sure that the electronic actuator motor here is engaged properly. You see behind there, you've got the two where the spring feet go into the back of the rockers. And then you want to be ensuring that these two rollers at the top of these rockers sit down nicely and place right either side of those cams there. That all looks good now. Um, do the other four. And let's say this is the actuator cam here. And that has just got to be turned over and engaged. We've got to turn that down two turns and then install the locker, the, um, the stop down here, and then wind that cam back till it touches the stop, and then we know that we're in the um, starting position. Guys, I'm sorry it's a little bit uh, noisy in here at the moment. We've got all the boys working. We've got Paul over here. Hello, mate. Hello, Paul, all right? Yeah, how you doing? So what we got going on here, mate? Uh, just finishing the crosswheel off. Okay. So we timed it up. Uh, Tappets, clearance is all set. The sump or be blasting the sump so we can paint that. Mm -hmm. and that looks nice. Then we'll bolt the sump on and pretty much ready to go. Yeah, looking I'll we'll get a few bolts in for them. Oh, we'll clean the manifold up. We'll be blast the manifold, take the carb off, paint that out nicely. Looks a bit grotty. Um, it's horrible, isn't it? Find some nice fresh bolts to put in. We'll paint this black as well. This area. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, paint that black. Um, any colour you like, as long as it's silver and black here, isn't it? Yep. Obviously, it'll come off, put the touch flywheel on. We'll probably clean the dizzy up as well. Manifold looks a bit horrid. Yeah, that could probably do with... Um, I don't know what we're going to do with that. We could either... Promise you, you could... You could wire brush it, couldn't you? An angle grinder, but it's going to take bloody ages. Yeah, that's the trouble, so, isn't it? We could either paint it, we could try painting it, or see if a customer wants to buy a new manifold. Yeah, we'll see how much we Brand new. Nice stainless manifold, look lovely, wouldn't it? Yes. So this one's nearly done, that's ideal, mate. Oh, we need a new cap as well. Yeah, I'll order a cap. Yeah, that one's dirty. So the V8 there, mate, that's all done, isn't it? V8's done, the manifold's in the right way now. The right way now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I, um, we thought I, we'd give you guys a little test, really, just to see if you would notice yeah, so if we, you were on the we, ball. We definitely knew it was on the wrong way. Yeah, and two or three of you did comment saying that it was on the wrong way round, so congratulations, you did pass the test. You've won a prize, which is nothing. Yeah, which is <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing <so. laughs> but yeah, honestly, we did, um, we did mean to do that. It was definitely a test. So we've got the plugs list now. Um... So this could come off the stand, the flywheel, clutch and flywheel can go on. Yeah. And you can go on the pallet, I think. So I think what we'll do is we'll get this one off, get this one on a, um, a small pallet and probably, probably set the Lotus up next, the one down there maybe. Yeah. And then once that one's out of the way, we'll get that BMW up here. Yeah. Um, we've got to build the Jag, we'll just strip them two down. Ideal, really. It's never a dull day. Right guys, so what we've got here is an Alfa Romeo head. This is the usual, it's a two litre from Bob Dove Motorsport. So Paul basically. <laughs> we'll put new valve seats in it just to basically sit the valves a little bit higher because they're a bit pocketed, I think. As you can see, I've got various stages of what I've done already. Um, so this is the seat insert that we put in. Obviously we've done all the exhaust, all the inlets, and you can see that they're about sort of three, three and a half mil higher than the inside of the combustion chamber. So, you can see I've done these three already. Now, Bob's requirement, the valve stem at the back of the head, so this is this end, 
from the spring base, that valve needs to be protruding 42 mil through the head, no more and not really any less. So we're going to do that to 42 and it's got a, a 30 degree head on it. So stage one, obviously get the inserts in. Now, as I've said to you before, I always fit these with about sixth out interference. We put it in with our special glue. Then what we do is we just top, face the tops and get a nice little top on there. Then what we do is we bore the throats out because as you can see, this head's already been ported. So what I want to do is just blend the seat sort of into the port, the existing port. So I've done that. Um, you can see the exhausts here are not done and they sort of overlap. So we always, when we order the inserts, we always do it so the, the internal is, is small and then we can take it out to what we want. So we've bored the throats out. Next step is to just put a single 30 degree seat on the top, just so we can put the valve in and get a correct measurement. So you can see there straight away how I've set the tool. So we've got the 30 degree cutter in there. We've just raised the cutter about a millimetre off the, off the insert and we've set the tool so it's just going to cover all of it because we're doing these with a straight 30 degree. We're not going to use the, the uh, three-face cutters on this. Bob just wants us to do it with a 30 degree. Um, so we set it up there. Now we're just going to put a cut on and just clean the whole of that insert with a 30 degree. So there you can see we put the 30 degree on, wound the tool off. Now what we're going to do is put the valve in and we're going to measure from the back of the valve underneath and see what we've got. So what we're going to do, we've got a measure from the back of the valve stem to the valve spring seat as well as we can really. So measuring that we've got 38.5, we'll just double check that. Yeah, about right. So we've got to take three and a half mil off that seat. So we bring it back round. So if we touch on the seat first, I'll show you how I know how much I'm taking off. Right, so that's a cut there. If you come down here, mate, you see these digits here. Each one of those is 0.1 of a mil, so each revolution of this head here is a millimetre. So we want to be going down three and a half turns. All right, cool. Yeah, so there we go. So that should give us a measurement now of just under, just under 42 mil. My calculations are right. And if you have a look at that seat, look, it's just started to touch on the combustion chamber. Yeah. So that's about perfect. So it's 42. So that'll be perfect, I reckon. Right, so the alpha head is all done now. What the as far as the seats concerned are. Uh, we've just given it a reface, and as you can see, we'll give it a little three thou lick, but you can see where it's cleaned half of the head and half not. Now this head's had a bit of a reface before, um, but the engine was running, but as you can see, it's perfectly flat on the base there, but you can see it's just cleaned this half. So basically, it looks like someone's refaced it on the pisp in the past, so. We'll give it 3 thou, and it looks like, if you look at the far side, it looks like it's cleaning um, over there now. So hopefully that's 6 thou and it's cleaned. Thumbnail and title, guys, is about this, this Vauxhall block down here that we've got all the bits for over here. So you can see the cylinder heads here. We've got all the gaskets and all the rest of it. All we're waiting for now is the pistons. Um, everything's cleaned up. Don't worry about the pulleys because he's putting new vernier pulleys on there but basically <laughs> the reason for this thumbnail and title is we've rebored the block now you've got to bear in mind this thing's been sitting for quite a long time so we've we pressure tested the block we've set it up bored it um, but before i hone it i always face it 
Um, otherwise, if you hone it first, it's covered in all, then you've got to wash it, then face it. So I always face the block and then hone it. But this is what we've found. So I give it one little lick over the other day. And as you can see, it only cleaned on half of it. So the block was quite warped, so it needed doing. But if you have a look over there, it's an absolute disaster. There's a big crack over there and a big crack round here and a little bit of a crack there. So I suspect what has happened there is this thing has been sitting full of water at one point and that looks to me like frost damage. So yeah, absolute nightmare really. Of course these blocks here, these early blocks are getting a little bit scarce now but I have managed to find one on eBay um, and the guy, I've managed to buy it. It's on a standard bore, 86 mil bore. So I bought it, I'm gonna get it picked up. The guys in Essex um, should be here, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday. Um, but fingers crossed guys, that that thing is, um, is gonna be all right. First thing obviously I'll do is pressure test it and uh, make sure there's no cracks. But yeah, absolutely, no, absolute nightmare really. But yeah, it was a little bit suspicious because when I bored it, the last bore, which is obviously this one, you can see there where it didn't clean, but obviously I couldn't make head and the tail of it because the others cleaned fine and this would probably hone out, but I suspect what that is, is where it's cracked, it's maybe pushed back a bit the metal and just deformed slightly. So I don't know whether this has run like this in the past, but it's definitely frost damage. Um, so that block is scrap. So I hope you've learned something by today's channel, guys. From all of us here at Bearham Engines, hope you have a lovely evening and we'll see you in another episode. Cheers.